All right, welcome back everyone to JFace Games. What we're talking about today is maths again. We're talking about um, dice rolls. Now, we already have the mechanic in place for the monsters, and we have the mechanic in place for what we're looking at in terms of the characters. So we know that we're gonna be rolling a D10, a D8, a D6, a D4 for stats and attributes, and we understand that the monsters are gonna have different stats or DCs that we're trying to hit. All that's been covered. What we're looking at here is, I've been still trying to figure out what's the easiest way to give bonuses, right? We know that there's an issue with pluses. When you give pluses, um, you can't really give more than just plus one because then it gets a little messy. And then the other question is, well, what happens if you do something like advantage, right? Which is a very simple, smooth mechanic from, you know, 5e. I know that it's from a system before 5e, but 5e is what's really sort of taken off with advantage, disadvantage. So what do we do? Well, I went to any dice and I started plugging and playing with a bunch of different stuff. And you can see here that here's the result, right? We have all these different statistical changes. And I looked at D6s, D8s, and D10s. Now. What are we looking at here? Well, I tried to make it in nice little tables up top um, and I'll space these out just, no, it's fine. So this table here is in essence looking at what happens, what's my statistical range if I roll a D6? You can see here's the spread to get a three or higher, to give a four or higher, a five or higher, a six or higher. Perfect. What happens when I add plus one? Well, that's easy math. That's just everything shifts down one. So you can see it's a big jump for getting a six and now you can actually get a seven. What happens if I have advantage, meaning that I'm gonna roll 2d6 and take the highest of them? Well, it's interesting because it makes it much easier to get a four or a five, but then it starts to dip down a little bit with the 30. And then finally, what's the new advantage? New advantage, what I'm trying to propose for this is that you roll a d6 plus a d4. So with each of these, it's you roll your dice plus one step down. And you can see what happens is it's gonna make it easier to get a three or a four, but those top two numbers, which makes sense because the D4 doesn't have a five or a six, stay the same. Interesting. Let's go down to D6s or D8s. So D8s, here's your range moving down. Here's your plus one, everything just shifts as normal, right? So you have this huge jump, 25% chance of a D8, 50% chance here, 60% chance here. A advantage makes it crazy good in this sort of mid-range, whoops, crazy good in this mid-range, and it's tapers down when you get to the top number, but still, even here, look at this, this is like a 20% bump at this seventh level, or seventh number. So you have this real meaty up until the final number, and then it's not as good as a plus one. And then you have what happens if I roll a D8 and a D6? Well, I really get a bump up in these numbers, even though they're not dramatically different. It's kind of in between here at the four range. Just a little bit better than plus one, a little bit less than plus one, and then the same as normal dice, right? What about D10? D10 is going to see the same pattern, right? It's the same pattern in the sense of when you're looking at, it's not as good as advantage, but it's a little bit better than plus one for these low numbers. Then it catches up to being about the same when you get to the very high numbers as plus one, and then it gets back to being just like the normal dice. So what do I like about this so far? What I like about this is that when we're thinking about this system, your dice represents sort of your proficiency, your capability, etc. So let's just talk about like a weapon, right? Like a... a um, a short sword or a long sword. We'll talk about long sword. So you have a long sword. If you're a D10 fighter with a long sword, that means rolling a nine or 10 is really hard and you're an expert at that weapon. So rolling a nine or 10 is hard and you're an expert at that weapon, right? However, we still want you to feel awesome at getting some of the more mid-range weapons. So what I like about doing a D10 plus a D8 is you really get better at some of these mid-range abilities. I mean, it's a huge jump up from these base numbers, 20% increase to get a five, right? 19% increase to get a six, right? Which, are, which, is, which is no laughing matter. It's good stuff. But in order to do that amazing excellence of a 10 or a nine, 
you're still kind of the same. And people that have a D8, don't, they don't even have a chance of doing that. Like, so if someone has just a normal D8 or a normal D6 striker, they can't even get that close, right? But you can reach that, it's just hard. And what I think also I like about this is, well, you know, why can't they get better at getting a nine or a 10? Well, what I think this also helps is the concept of that monster design, right? Because when we're designing that monster for that target number, usually that target number is a lower number, right? That target number's here. Now, the bloody number, the death number, might be way up in this seven to 10 range, depending on the monster, you know, because like we talked about goblins, I think we said death ranges, death DC might be like a four or five. So what this means is that if you're up against goblins and you have advantage and it takes a five to kill them, normally you as this awesome fighter at 60, now it's 80% chance, that's a pretty big jump. So you might be mowing through things, right? Even if a monster has a target number of 30, you're increasing your percent chance of doing something by, or I'm sorry, a target number of eight, which is really high, you're increasing it by 10%. That's pretty massive, right? So I think that there is a, I think there's a, I like what this range is doing in respect to what it means to have a D8 and a D10 as your striker dice or your ability dice, and what those numbers mean in terms of target value and what they're gonna do to a monster. Because getting the bloodied number or getting the death number is a big deal. Um, so that more mid ranges monsters, hitting those numbers, you become really good at it. But a monster that's supposed to be epic in, in essence and sort of what it takes to actually hit a death number, it's harder, right? Now, what this doesn't take into account is still the concept of like um, pluses, right? Because we still have the effect die, which currently the effect die is giving you pluses. And so that means that could you get pluses and advantage? You know, that's getting a little trickier. Or is it just, so let's take that D10 here. This is the formula for that D10. Um, what if it's like um, we're actually doing multiple D8s here? So maybe this is the scenario of double advantage. Like what does it mean to have double advantage? Well, in this scenario, you can see that that range, uh, you're now 46% chance on an eight, whereas here it was 39%. So it didn't bump up a ton, 66 at seven. Um, that one jumped up a lot. So it still jumps up dramatically in these mid ranges. So. Maybe you could do double advantage, you know, single advantage, double advantage, where you're rolling these step dice below. I don't know, I still like the idea of effort just being a plus one, depending on the pips, because it still is hard to get those plus ones because you're having to sacrifice not taking um, points in spark points. So you can do feats and abilities, you're instead taking this effort. Um, so I like that idea of effort still being plus one, but maybe effort is, giving yourself advantages and there are stacks of advantages i mean we don't know what it looks like for um the only issue with that being that if you're stacking advantages then you have an issue of your total ability or range because once again if you've got like a d4 striking dice and the monster has a five target number then it's impossible you can never hit them right and you should be able to hit them with effort right so effort has to be pluses so it looks like we're gonna end up with two different scenarios where you have pluses that can be used and you're gonna have advantage. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that allows the DM to have two tools in their toolbox, but they have to understand what that means in terms of when I give someone a plus, when I give someone advantage a plus, I'm shifting their percentage higher at every step and they have a new step to get to. Um, an advantage, this style of advantage, I'm making it so their lower numbers are inflated a lot but their higher numbers are still the same. And so that becomes a tool in the toolbox, right? And I don't know if it becomes a scenario thing where, you know, there's specific mechanics as when you're allowed to give an advantage or when you're allowed to give a plus one, or if it's just the DM's discretion. So let me know what you think of these mechanics as is, uh, these distributions of numbers. Um, and we'll go from there. I'm very interested what you guys think of this as adding in this concept of advantage with a step down and the idea of what's effort gonna actually end up being. I think it should be plus ones, but just wanna know what you guys think as well.
Bye.